So here we are back at the uh, the Hornet Hive, and I'm here today with John Walters, a naturalist and artist, um, and we're going to have a look through this hornet nest together. And John's looking for something in particular. What, what what's that, John? What are you hornet, after? A hornet rove beetle. It's a a bit hornet thing, rove like a beetle. Devil's coach horse, which lives in hornet nests. Okay. Well, what does it do in hornet's nests? Well, it, actually, its larvae feed on all the the larvae of flies and things like that that feed in the waste compartment of the nest so we know the gunk under the nest okay so they should be in there this time of year if they're around it's quite okay. a rare beast it's only ever been seen a couple of times in Devon but mainly because it lives in hornet nests and they're the <laughs> right. easiest place to sort of look into sure. really so it's probably a lot more common than people think right we're going to have a look in this nest and uh, we don't know what we're going to find we have seen one live hornet at the entrance this morning so we know it's not totally abandoned but it's quite cold we've had a few hard frosts since what I last did a video last week so we're thinking that probably there aren't going to be uh, many hornets left in here at oh, least we're hoping anyway <laughs> <laughs> we hope so <laughs> okay so um, we can go in from well we can let's get rid of some of the woodwork and then we can see what we're doing mm -hmm. I've already detached this these top bars and a comb from the nest. It's a decent size, isn't it? And we can put those over there. When do they move into it? Well, that's interesting because I, I I don't think it was until late July or early August, right. and I was I would have expected hornets to start nesting before that. But yeah, well they do. Well they move. They can move nests. So what they do, oh, they'll right. start and they can make start in a bird box or even in a grass tussock, of course, somewhere like that. And then when they outfill their space, then the queen goes off and starts makes a new nest. So she obviously came in here then, brings some of the workers, and then some of the workers remain in the old nest and rear the rest of the brood and then once they're all out they all go into the new nest and build that one up so okay space. Yeah, it's quite amazing they can do that that's interesting because that's similar to the asian hornet behavior as well isn't yeah. it yeah. They, they they do a primary nest and a secondary nest in a similar sort of way yeah, so, well, okay well john john's armed with a large kitchen knife, knife yeah. <laughs> so it looks so we're, um, i mean the nests are amazing because they've they've got this like central sort of air conditioning system on the outside and you can see all these little pockets of air which uh, are used for cooling and insulating the nest. And so we're digging through these, we're not actually into the nest yet at all. And these are so and you're right near the entrance there, so if there's anything mm -hmm. in the entrance then yeah, we might come out. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's too cold for them to fly, but we'll if we run off in a minute, then you'll know. <laughs> yes, if you suddenly see this camera shake, <laughs> you'll know why. And we're signing it to here. We could have a slice through the top of this. You can see the little curve. Of life. They would have been started at the top and then they worked down so right. the, fee, the queen would have started off with a, making one little section and then they said so let's see if we can build down and it's a very elaborate structure you can see it here on this side you see that it's, so concertinas down so you have one little smaller bit on the top then you have different layers and they have little struts, you'll be able to see them in a minute, in between the layers. So it's like a sort of high-rise story block of there we go. So that's the roof with a few cells in it. Right. And then you see that's got one and a few struts here, so it's quite strong, all oh, made of wood of course. But and we can already strong. see the hexagonal pattern on the, yeah. the top of the next mushroom-shaped section. Yeah. So let's just And there we go, there's the the brood cells. Yeah, amazing, isn't it? Just a 
few which are, I don't know if there's anything in these. Absolutely the same of course as uh, as honeycomb yeah. so we cool. can see we can actually compare the two oh, right, side yeah. by side here. It's amazing, isn't it? And apart from the size obviously, um, identical hexagonal pattern. And that's because that's the most efficient use of space. Sure. That shape. And materials too, I yeah, guess. Yeah. It's paper thin, obviously it is, it is like paper, but amazing construction. And am I right in thinking that um, the European Hornet uses live wood to, to, to make its nest, it's, to shave it into paper? Mm, no, I've seen them taking bits of dead wood. A dead wood, yeah. okay. But it might use live wood, I mean it's a pretty tough beast. Because I think there's a there's two types of wasp that, that use, one uses dead wood and one uses live wood, I, I believe. Oh, right, I'm okay. not actually sure about that. But. Right, yeah, I haven't got that close. Right. <laughs> um, I've, seen them, I've seen them taking dead wood. Uh, also I've seen them stripping um, ash saplings, uh, where they, um, uh -huh. they take the sap out, so they'll actually strip all the bark off that. So I don't know whether they use that, because they I have seen green in a nest all the time. So some green bands in the uh, in the comb. So there we go. No buzzing yet, so we'll be all right. Yeah, you can see there again. There's a lot of hornets come out of here, and all these very strong little struts. Uh -huh. Beautiful construction. It is amazing construction. Yeah. A bit like a sort of Carton, isn't it? It's an egg carton. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's another one. So this is we're down to the third layer of. Oh, there is a hornet. Oh right, we've got a, we found a live hornet. <laughs> and then you might get some queens that will try and hibernate in here. But there's, right, right. Oh, there's a grub there as well. There's okay. a few. There's a hornet grub. And a hornet. Docile hornet. Struggling to really get warmed up in these yeah. conditions. And in here. And here's a grub. That's the hornet larva. It's pretty well full grown. So these are amazing. These um they're actually fed by the, the hornets and they actually come out and beg. Oh wow. <laughs> they come out and beg. I see a friend of mine had a hornet nest behind some glass in a in a wall so you could watch them. Um, although he did take the glass off actually so you could just see them. But the the adult the worker hornets would come in and feed the little grubs and um, they sort of come out like little baby birds. <laughs> cool. There we go. That, that's obviously not gonna not gonna make it. Um, so they uh, they have the same a similar life cycle to, to wasps uh, I guess. Oh yeah well they are wasps, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're just big wasps aren't they? So, yeah, so, so, so this is the lower so obviously they start at the top. They will right. reuse cells. They, they seem to work their way down. So as we get towards the bottom, you see there's quite a few larvae. So we're three layers down, and we've probably got what maybe two more layers below yeah, that one. Yeah, there's one, two, three. Yeah, so four, five, six altogether. So this is a really multi-story yeah. um, nest. It certainly is, yeah, and it's not. I don't think there's going to be anything in here. So they they work they work their way down through the layers, but they don't seem to reuse. Is that right? Well, they, have, well, they do. do they, they will use. I've seen them reuse some okay. in this nest of watch, but they tend to build seem to build a lot of new ones. There's, there's a hornet, so there's a hornet the down the again. bottom there trying to hide from us. And there seem to be a few grubs in here. Uh -huh. so. Oh, so they're still hopeful about hatching some more. Well, I suppose it could be so yeah. warm, hasn't it, that they've been until it's suddenly gone cold. So. They have been just really active still, bringing in lots yeah. of food, but usually the nest would die off fairly slowly. So in here... No hornets. There's some there that look... Oh, look, there's one. Very dozy looking hornet. You can see all the larvae in here, so you can see all the, the larvae. Right, right. In there. So those are just going to die off, aren't they? Because yeah, they're not they're being fed. There are, there is, um, I don't know if they get into hornet nests, but there's some hoverflies, or big sort of bee mimic hoverflies, which tend to go into bumblebee and wasp nests. I don't know if they go into hornet nests, but there you often find their larvae. 
be in the nest this time of year. Right. It's only in wasp nests which I've dug up. And they look a bit like this. They've got little spikes sticking out the side and they feed on all the dead grubs and dead wasps uh -huh. in the nest afterwards. And they turn into those amazing, like sort of bee mimic. There's one called Volucera, Volucella zonaria, which is like a, is a hornet mimic. Um, so that that's quite an impressive creature you right. see in your gardens in the summer. And it does look like a hornet, but it's larva feeds inside the nest. It's an interesting behaviour when the, the queen, the female of the of the fly, goes into the nest. If she gets stung, usually she sneaks in and gets gets away with laying a few eggs. But if she gets stung and killed, then she automatically has a, a reflex action where she just lays all her eggs. So they're all just oh, laid right. in there. And the larvae just hide around in the bottom. And when the nest is died off, then the uh, then the larvae just crawl around and feed on all the uh, remains. There's quite a lot of food in here, actually. Look at it, there's a few more there, actually. Oh, yes, there's one that's kind of quite active <laughs> and uh, yeah <coughs> she's now looking for the entrance okay. the entrance really she's flying around where the hive used to be before it was oh, moved right, yeah. so whether that's the whether she hasn't been outdoors for a while maybe. yeah maybe yeah. So, so we've got this layer here now um Obviously, hornets have males and females, as, uh, yeah. like all other insects. But um, so they, but towards the end of the season, uh, do they do they produce a, 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 a significant batch of queens? They, oh they yeah, produce they produce females. Of them, yeah, right. Yeah, which is why there's a problem with these Asian hornets. You know, you could get to three hundred queens coming out of a nest. Right. So if they're not found, obviously they won't all survive. But if a few survive, then that you know, big trouble. You know. Which is almost certain going to happen next year. Right. Because they haven't. They found a few nests, but they can't have found all of them. Well, they definitely haven't. Because yeah. There's been sightings. I think there was one worker seen in Liscard, but there was no nest destroyed there. So that's one. Right. And that's just you know tip of the iceberg, I expect. So we can expect 2019 to be uh, a lot busier in terms of. Oh, I think so. Horn yeah. uh, Asian hornets. Yeah. yeah. I expect so. It depends on the weather. I mean, the, the weather might do. Uh, save us really if there's a bad cold, cold spring yeah. spring then they won't do very well yeah, of course what we're looking at here we have to be clear it are european hornets not not asian hornets is it easy to tell the queens from the workers yeah i mean mainly by the size of them they're absolutely huge i mean you don't often see the queens i found one the other day when i was um just looking under some moss with some beetles in, the, in that sort of place they hibernate and there was a a big queen hornet under there, and it's about another third bigger than that. It's a huge, great thing. And the queen should still be in here somewhere. Oh, so the original queen yeah, she, might might still be. Yeah, she might be in there. She's alive. Almost certainly dead. But there's a, that's another worker, isn't it? Yeah, that's a worker. Sticking really having trouble warming up. There's another mm. one in here. There's another one coming <laughs> Oh, right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's a few more hornets in here than we expected, perhaps. Yeah, well, um, probably a good idea to not delve too much deeper right. for a minute. But, but these, I mean, these are not going to last long now. So. They're not flying around and feeding, but that one's quite alert. Isn't it? Yeah, it's watchful. It's <laughs> not uh, not going to take off, I don't think. No, but. Not. but you know, we've taken half the nest apart, and they still, you know, the ones that are left, I think, are just sort of hunkered down near mm. the entrance, trying to get, get warm, really. No sign of your rove beetle yet? No, well that would be in all the gunk right underneath. Oh, all the right. waste is down below the nest usually. Right. 
Well, it depends can... on the nest really. Sometimes they'll they chuck out all the waste and it just gets chucked out of the nest somewhere and other times it collects underneath somewhere. Right. So it depends what happens. As to what they're going to do. Something down there. What's that? That looks like a wax moth. All right, yeah, it is. There's a hornet taking a, quite an interest in my camera, or me, or both, but not in an aggressive way. It's more kind of. I don't know. It's buzzing around, isn't it? I presume they're like honeybees and they the hornets stay in the nest for a certain time to start with after hatching and then as they get older they go out and forage. Oops. <laughs> Operate with that. There's a few, so there's just a few in there. But it's got a few grubs. Some of them it gets quite wet. I don't know. There's is there drainage on this? On this? Uh, well, that nest is actually that, that what you're looking at there is actually um, the floor material because this is this this hive had um, what I call an eco floor. It's a, it's basically wood shavings and uh, and um, leaf mold and stuff okay. in the bottom to start with. So a lot of this this stuff is just stuff that I put in there. All oh, right. Some of them, I mean, they produce a lot of urine or something <laughs> in one of these nests, and you can actually get pints of it, especially oh, really? when all the, que the new queens have hatched, well. and they uh, all remain in the nest, whereas all the uh, all the workers who go outside to urinate, yeah. all, the, all the queens in there will just put inside, and you can get <laughs> pints of this stuff collecting up below the nest, so you get all this rotten, wet gunk, which is what these fly larvae and things feed on. And then the depth and the road beacon coming after them. So there are still a number of lava in here. But obviously they're not going to be fed, so they're, they're probably dead already, to be honest. They're not going to last on that. So. These are the newer, I presume some of these bigger combs, you can actually by measuring the size of the comb you can work out how many new queens will have been produced by uh -huh. the nest. And a nest like this would produce a good number. Yeah. You might find a male as well. Sometimes you get males in here. Let's see, there's a few hornets in there. Right, so we found where they're hiding. Yeah, so they're not quite dead yet. They're pretty dozy, but, but they're, they're not really still moving. And there's some more a bit further down as well. Um, any more layers there are, so is that one?
There's one there that's um, significantly lively. It's chasing John. It's just hovering around your head, John. It's going to go in to where it thinks the entrance is. Of course, we've rotated this hive, so what it thinks is the entrance isn't actually the entrance at all anymore. Oops, <laughs> saw you coming that one. Just too smart to walk into that tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the males are quite easy to recognise actually because they have very long, dark antennae. So he's come out this way. He's inside, John. Oh. Okay. It's down there. So there's another one. Another one sitting on um, empty comb here, if you want to. Oh, there's right. two. So, if you're watching this in the UK, please learn to recognise this as the European Hornet, which is relatively harmless to bees. I mean, it does take a few bees, but nothing like to the extent that the Asian Hornet takes them. Uh, and this, this Hornet is, is got, distinguished by a, as you can see from this one that's got its head in a cell here, um, much more yellow on it than the, uh, than the Asian Hornet. Much more yellow on the body, on the abdomen. Yeah, it's bigger as well. Bigger and it's well substantially reason. bigger, yeah. The, the overall impression of the Asian Hornet is a dark looking insect with a little bit of yellow on, whereas this one is the other way around. It's a very much a yellow uh, first impression with a little bit of black on it here and there, mm -hmm. and some orange often too. Yeah, yeah. yeah that one's hidden away in there. It's a few <coughs> larvae tucked away in there, but they obviously haven't been fed for the last few days. So right. And now the weather's suddenly gone much colder and they're really not a lot of food for them. Yeah, they're right at the end of the lives. Yeah, usually end of October. It's, rare, it's quite rare to see them active in November. Mm -hmm. Wasps, wasps, the smaller wasps can, but they, they've got a smaller body size so they can warm up a bit quicker. But the hornets, there's a spider in there. <laughs> So this rove beetle we haven't found yet, no, uh, we no. might still, but who knows. Um, how does it find hornet nests? I must, um, must detect the uh, Oh, there's one, the look nest. at this one, John. Oh yeah, is that a queen? That looks like a queen. Yeah, that's a queen, isn't it? Yeah. Ooh, big and heavy, yeah, and she's having trouble taking off, but she's managed it, and she's flown off behind you. Okay, so we're just... A tracking queen. this queen around the apiary. She's in my that. camera bag. <laughs> Looking for a place to hibernate. Yeah. So maybe just thinking about lot some of them do hibernate in the nest. So and these are big things. These aren't active that much of the year, so right, so they'll hibernate, they'll come out mate, hibernate under some moss or something on a log. Right. And then you see them a little while in May, but then they're, once they're in the nest laying eggs, then they, they stay there. It's hard to see her in this tube, but yeah. she's substantially yeah. bigger than the uh, well, worker hornets that we've seen so one. far. So she would be the original queen for this uh, nest? No, I think no? she's... Yeah, or she's a new, a new queen. one, yeah, she's the a new queen, queen okay. she'd have... Yeah, you can see there, you see how much... If you can get that, how much bigger the queen is. Compared to that worker there, you see. 
Yeah, I mean, she's probably, I know, I know, 40 mil long, maybe yeah, 50 yeah. even, well, maybe heading towards 50, including yeah. certainly including antenna. Yeah, but her wings and her wings are nice and fresh, so right. the old queen would have worn wings because she's obviously been around right. since this time last year. Uh, whereas the new hibernating queens are. Have fresh ends to the wings. So having found one new queen, it's possible we might find more. Oh, there could be more in here. Yeah, I mean, most of them would go off and also hibernate somewhere else, but some will stay. It's all loose now. So. See what's, what's in yeah. <laughs> I think John spotted something. Yeah. Here we go. That one's disappeared. Decided that. I mean, a lot of the workers obviously don't stay in the nest when they die off. Is right. it? They must fly off because there would be hundreds in here by this time of year. But the ones that remain are just a few sort of late. Maybe ones that are just looking after the nest actually. But you can see there's a good view of the structure there. Isn't there? Struts which hold on. Right, you can see the layers really yeah. well here. Yeah. There's a couple of live hornets in the bottom there. It's like a multi-storey car park almost. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's not a very good analogy, but it's it's got those supporting pillars between each layer. Um, so it's it, it's really they build their nest uh, right angles compared to to bees who build vertically. Hornets build horizontal layers like this. As do wasps, of course. Well, as John says, they are a wasp. Yeah. Okay, yeah, there's just a few hornets in there, and they're on the last of the cells, but I can't see any some fly larvae in the bottom there. Um, right down the bottom, or some sort of larvae anyway. Uh, I can't see there's any. small things moving down there. Yeah, I mean, the larva of this rove beetle would be a great big thing. Uh huh. Yeah. But you can find it right through the winter, so it's worth coming back and having another. Okay. Look. Well, we can leave all this debris in here. But, and, yeah, I mean, um, another week and they'll be, they'll all be dead. But there's nothing I can see in there. So we're looking for larva, uh, yeah. roughly larva rather than adult larva. Uh, yeah, I think so, yeah. Okay. The, um, this time of year. And you say the adult is a type of stag beetle? It's a, a rove beetle, like a devil's coach horse. Oh, right, right. Thing, so yeah. quite a big thing. Quite a big, chunky thing, yeah. So these there. are the sealed comb. Oh, okay. So so the, so the, the larva cocoon. spins a yeah. little cocoon on the end, and then, so look at that. And then there'll be a, a pupa inside there, I suspect, or even a. Well, that, that one's hatched, but it's. It's a young hornet, but that one's very. Obviously, they're hatching, but they're not. They're not coming out. Yet. Maybe a pupa hornets. Any hornets on that? Here in there. They're struggling really to get get the airborne. Amazing that structure there. Beautiful. Yeah. And the bands, I like the bands are different colour on the on the combs as well. There's a couple of hornets lurking in between the layers there. Okay. Yeah. Wondering why their world has suddenly turned through right angles. So we'll just put that it's a pretty cold gently wind range. back. It's a nice sunny spot here, so they obviously kept a little bit of warmth. But they're not actually able to fly out and feed. So. I've got a couple of other nests, hornet nests I want to have a look at, but I might leave them another week looking at this. Just mm. doing it. Double sure, but.
What a beautiful insect. They are, they're magnificent things. And really not that aggressive. I mean, they're, they're, they, none of them have tried to uh, made any effort to, no. to, to sting us. No, no. <laughs> it's yeah. famous last well, I spent a lot probably, of time but... sitting around watching hornets. And, yeah. And they do tend to, even when you are very, very active, they, they do tend to just headbutt you. Yes. And sort of show you who's boss. And you sort of just, but they, they rarely sting. I've never been stung by one. No, so I haven't <laughs> either, yeah. They're certainly much less prone to stinging than wasps are, the, than the, the, the common yeah, wasps. Yeah, I wouldn't do this with a wasp nest. No. A wasp nest. <laughs> they would definitely go for you. But we were just looking at, I was just looking at some of the comb actually, that, looking at some of the size of the cells. And some of these ones. Compared to these, you can see these must yeah. be the queen cells that they build later on. You can see that, that size comparison, some of these are huge, aren't they? So they would yes. rear the queens and the new males at last right. know, later on in the right. season, build the nest up. And that's the whole function of the nest really, is to produce the next generation. So it builds up all these workers, builds up a big force which can gather lots of food. So by late summer they can gather enough food to produce a whole load more queens and males. Yeah. They fly off and then that's the end of the nest. So all the queens have gone apart from that one. So really this nest has done what it's, what it's set up to do. Yeah. And now this is in the last sort of stages. So they would obviously go on a bit longer if the weather was better. Because we've still got larvae in here. There's one hornet with its head in a cell there. You can just see its yeah. rear end pulsating. Whether it's hiding or what, who knows? But the um, the wasps, of course, have solved the problems of survival in a in a slightly different way to the honeybees, um, in that they don't store food. Um, they 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 save their colony by means of hibernating queens. Would that be reasonable? Yeah, oh yeah, that's describe? how they work. Yeah, yeah so, so I mean, obviously, the the social honeybees and at the more advanced stage, these are more primitive things that, that hibernate. So only the queens will hibernate. So lots of new males and queens will emerge in September, October, but all the males will die and just the, just the queens, the big breeding females will hibernate and then emerge the following spring to form the new nest and start the whole cycle again. Right. There's some nice grubs in there. That's a stunning bird. There was one live one actually I saw. It was still moving. Oh yeah, all these are. In here, they actually. are, are they? Okay. Yeah, you can see them all. See them all moving around. Mm. Mm. So they would be fed um, obviously by the workers and, yeah. and, and it would be what? It would be they're not totally carnivorous, are they? they, they yeah, do the larvae are fed on um, insects. And oh, what right, they okay. do is they, you see them hovering around flowers and they will take nectar and they do like sweet stuff, obviously. Right. But they mainly feed on insects. Right. So they, um, they eat a lot of wasps and eat anything they can catch, flies, bumblebees, butterflies, anything really that they can, they can nail. And I've said this before on these videos, but I, I've noticed that um, when these hornets got established, I noticed the wasp population locally dropping dramatically, and I suspect that the hornets may have found the wasp nest and uh, may have been living largely on wasps, yeah, which is do. why they've they, done so well. Yeah, they do they, eat a lot of wasps. Yeah, because yeah, um... they didn't seem to be that interested in the bees, in the honeybees, uh, considering they're surrounded here by honeybee colonies. Um, only a relatively few uh, hornets I ever, ever saw taking bees. But, yeah. um, I think they're e the wasps are easy for them to catch. They're quite slow 
Right. Mm. Whereas you see them hunting around ivy, and a lot of the insects are very quick, and they can nip out of the way because the hornet's a great lumbering thing. Sure. Really. You can't really turn. Very They're not very manoeuvrable, are they? So they'll go in. They tend to just pounce on anything, and they're picking out any weakness um, in any sort of weak insects. They will just get them, kill them, and what they do is they they're only really interested in the muscles. So they'll rip off all the wings and the body and just get the thorax, which contains all the flight muscles. Right. And they'll mash that up and then they'll take that into the nest and they'll mash it up right outside and then feed yeah. that to the lawn. Does anything predate hornets? Actually, um, I don't know what would eat a hornet. Probably not many things would touch them. Obviously, because wasps, wasps and hornets, have, you know, they're coloured like that and there's all these mimics, which, right. you know, things like moths that mimic... Uh, and it's those flies, that the, hover, the hover flies that go in the nest, which also mimics. And that obviously works, because not many things will touch wasps again once, they, sure. once they've been nailed. But anyway, once they've been stung by one, they leave them alone. So right. it does work very well. And that bright yellow is, I guess, a, perhaps a warning signal to, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. to yeah. other creatures yeah, as well. You can tell it works so yeah. well, because all these, you know, there's lunar hornet moths and there's various hover flies, very, a lot of things which actually look like. Um, wasps, which right. aren't as completely harmless, right. but they gain protection from the fact that there are wasps around in the countryside. Right. That things will just leave them alone. Which is one of those. Um, <laughs> yeah. So we're, we're possibly very veering off here into uh, evolution theory, but um, it's one of those things that people use as an argument against evolution, isn't it? It's like they say, yeah. well, "How do these things know to imitate wasps?" Well, <laughs> you know, it doesn't work like that. It doesn't that, work does like it? that. No, it's the fact that things that are predate the predators are leaving them alone, and only a tiny advantage of you looking like a wasp. If, you, if a few of the insects get left alone, then you can see that will multiply over millions of years. Right. That will evolve into, some of them are super. They, some of the mimics, like the lunar hornet moth, is like a super hornet. It looks exactly like a hornet. It's about wow. the same size. And uh, it, even if you pick one up, it curls its body around and pretends to sting you. I don't know how that's evolved. But it's, <laughs> why don't honey bees build that vertically? And, and, the well, I guess um, because um, it makes their cells dual purpose because not only can they raise their babies in them, but they can also store liquids and solids in them. Yeah, because the, uh, the, um, the 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 well, we can look at it here. So there's a little bit of scrappy comb. Um, the cells aren't actually horizontal; they're slightly angled. Oh right, so they're upwards. not. Yeah, so they're angled. Yeah, okay. You can that. see it uh, a little bit on here. This is a bit of a mucky little bit of comb, but keep stuff in them. So if the, if the cells are this way on, then you can fill them up with liquid um, to the limit of the surface tension of the liquid, I guess. Okay, yeah. yeah. So it's got a slight upward incline. So I guess they calculate that slope to ma to maintain um, the level of liquid, which is the maximum allowable for the uh, for the surface tension of the nectar. That's yeah, what I'm trying yeah. to say okay. in a in a clumsy sort of way. Um, and then they seal it with a wax cap. Whereas, obviously, if it was that way on, if, I mean, if it was, if it was, if they were hanging down like the yeah, hornets do, obviously you couldn't store liquid in them, and it would make it a lot more difficult to store yeah. pollen. Cleaning uh, what, out where the grubs and things are in there. What have we got dung here? Fly. A dung fly. That is. We can see it. There you go. Yeah, and I suppose from the point of view of cleaning it with the larvae in there, it needs to be. It doesn't want to be the other way up because everything would just collect in the bottom. Sure. The sure. Yes. So, yeah, so they, the, the, the bees, I guess, because they're bees, well, we surmise, and I, I imagine somebody's kind of demonstrated this to some extent, that um, bees are a branch of the wasp family, as it were. Oh, they are, yeah, they're so, vegetarian wasps. Right, they so... They evolve from certain species... Certain vegan wasps, of, actually. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> really, right, yeah. I vegan suppose. Wasps, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, that's known, yeah, they, are, they branched off from... In fact, they're more closely related to some some of the wasps today than others because they branched off quite early. Something to do with the structure of the thorax. It's, it's closely related to some of the species right. of, of wasps which we see now. So somewhere in, in ancient history, a bunch of wasps <laughs> or something mutated somehow and figured out how to build comb the other way around using glandular secretions from their own bodies instead of shavings yeah. from trees and uh, came up with this vertical form of home instead of the horizontal form of home which is which is fascinating and puzzling at the same time yeah. of course so is this all constructed just from 
nectar and pollen then that they're just reconstituted in their body no the, the, well as it, yes yes absolutely it, yeah. it's a, it's a bodily secretion they have yeah. glands on their abdomens which produce beeswax and of course it's this is very brittle this is new beeswax and, and it hasn't really been used for very much so it's quite brittle but um, it is a it is a glandular secretion uh, and yet it is totally waterproof because obviously they're storing a water soluble liquid in it yeah, yeah. so it has to be completely waterproof um, it's oil soluble um, unlike uh, honey which of course which is water soluble okay. and, and unlike propolis which is actually alcohol soluble okay. um, and you can just see a very faint line of propolis along here which mm -hmm. they use to seal up the Oh, see right, yeah, the gaps yeah. in okay. woodwork. There's probably mm -hmm. more. There's a lot more on this one. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so so they they have th they use three substances: beeswax, which is fat soluble, honey nectar, which is water soluble, and propolis, which is alcohol soluble. And of course, because the, none of those things will mix with the other, um, they can use them for all completely separate yeah. purposes in the same space. Yeah, and um, yeah, that's the I guess the key to their success. Yeah, yeah. Their manipulation of the physical world in a way that is advantageous to their survival yeah, and of course hornets and wasps have to find some sort of shelter nest because it's made of paper and, and obviously wouldn't be uh, waterproof to any extent although I guess it would shed water to you know you to, to, to some extent but the Asian bees seen, yeah, yeah they, the Asian hornets do build their um, nests outdoors which is interesting so the Asian honeybees Sorry? The Asian. Well, the actual oh, yeah, Asian Hornets Asia, too, Yes, they? that's yeah. true. Yes, yes. Yeah. yes. They must have a waterproof um, outside, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, you get tree wasps and other social wasps. And there's several species of wasps, not just one. Sure. And there's the ones that go on the ground, but there's, there's a tree wasp which builds in in trees and bushes and things like that. Right. And that, that's out in the open, so they must have more of a, a waterproof coating to their nest. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, maybe they have some kind of varnish or, um, or something like... Um, like shellac, like the, yeah, the beetles do in Thailand and Burma. Yeah, I've never really examined one of their nests closely, but obviously the hornets are always inside. They're in a dead tree, naturally, I suppose, and then they'll just take to sheds and beehives and whatever they can find that's a similar right. situation. Yeah. Have to be careful. Yeah. It's certainly smaller than the queen. Let's have a closer look. Um, yeah, it's a male, isn't it? And you tell that how? Well, you've got to be certain, because look, it's got very long antenna. Oh, long antenna, right, OK. Oh, well, I was mm, extra careful yeah. with these things. But, um, have a look. Yeah, it's a male. You can see, so... <laughs> first time I did this, I thought, mm, better check this. But that is definitely a male, so you can pick it up, because it, it won't have a sting. Male hornet. See with his big long. He'll try and sting you. There's again, right. but hasn't got a sting. Only male bees and wasps have stings. So if you know for certain, you've got to be careful, <laughs> obviously. But they, the male. Um, so you mean male bees oh, and wasps um, don't have swings? Yeah, no yeah. male bee or wasp has a sting because right. the sting is an ad is adapted, is evolved from the ovipositor. So only females are going to have that. So all males lack a sting so so as long as you know they have an extra segment to their antenna and they have 13 segments and they have an extra segment to their body but that's not quite so easy to see right. um, but with certainly with social wasps in britain the males have these long very dark antennae which mm. are curled down at the bottom right so once you see that if you're daring <laughs> you can pick <laughs> them up and uh it's a bit of a party trip, you know, to see yeah. how hold a hornet. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not going to hurt you. You can see there. It's a beautiful thing. So we've got males, females and queen. Yeah, today. that's good, yeah. yeah. It's obviously a late hatching male that's, or one that's come in. They will, obviously males. So males nests, would normally hatch when? When would in you expect September, to see? In September, October time. Okay. So once the nest is maturing, right. so a year like this year where it's been really good weather, they'll mature earlier. So, so they produce drones ahead of producing queens, obviously? Well, around about, or about the, same the same time, time. yeah, they'll okay. produce them. I don't know in a particular nest whether they, they'd hatch at the same time, because they, obviously they don't want them to inbreed. Right. So they, what the males do is they fly out and they'll patrol bits of ivy 
and then when the new uh, queens emerge then they'll fly to that to feed and they'll get mated there although some males will obviously go round the hives as well and wait for them or the, the nests anyway to uh, wait for the new queens to come out right it's a male that shows the size difference between the male and the queen and you can see there the, how long the antennae are female well the queen's antenna are seem from this angle straighter and shorter yeah they're straighter they're usually a little redder as well they're more sort of orangey color whereas the, the males are definitely hooked at the end that's probably used in the courtship or mating i know the uh, potter wasps which i study are really closely related to these and the males of those have little orange hooks on the end of their antennae uh -huh. and they use those to tap the female's antennae when he's mating with her okay probably to pacify the queen and the female in that case but, uh, and so something probably happens a similar thing happens with these well, these two don't seem particularly interested in each other anyway no no imagine the, fe the queen is mated already and she's right. just gone in there to hibernate and the male's just hanging around in there. He's either a late emerging one or he's, he's one that's come into the nest to look for, for females and then just hung in there while it's because it's too cold. Right. Mm -hmm. so. <coughs> Stick that in there in the cool. Right. I've got some drone flies here. This is a, a drone fly, which again is a honeybee mimic, and a very good one too. But it is a fly. Oh right. Yeah, it's, yes, it's very it? good mimic, isn't, isn't it? Isn't that good? They even fly with their legs hanging down, just like, uh -huh. like honeybees do. But you can tell it's a fly because sure. its head's all eyes, and it hasn't. Only its antennae wings. are tiny. It's only got two wings. But apart from that, it's a pretty good mimic. Mm -hmm. These things hibernate as adults, so you often see them around this oh, time okay. of year. The larvae are rat-tailed maggots, and they'll feed in um, stagnant water. And the larvae have a, a very long breathing tube at the end, which gives them their name. Right. Mm, nice sort of thing. It buzzes, you know, trying to make itself look fierce and frightening, <laughs> like it's going to sting you, but it's completely... And you caught it on ivy. Yeah, it was on some ivy. Yeah, this time of year, ivy is such an important plant. Right flower for so many insects yeah particularly anything that's coming to the end of its days or things like this which are going to hibernate they're getting a, their last stock of food on for the year and then they're going into hibernation for a few months have you seen any ivy bees oh yes yeah there's yeah. lots yeah. yeah there's lots here actually uh -huh. nesting down by the river here right so, Well, it's a shame we didn't find the uh, the rove beetle, no, but no. nevertheless, this has been a really interesting exercise to to look at the the structure of a hornet's nest properly, and even while there are still hornets in it, <laughs> yeah, it's a bit more exciting, which is <laughs> <laughs> when yes. there's a few, just a few, <coughs> just right. a few. Yes, I wouldn't have done this uh, a month ago, no, for even sure. a week ago, I think. Yeah. Well, it's been really interesting. Thanks very much, John. And um, that's right. Yeah, really I think interesting. we've we've both learned. Yeah, it's always fun to look here. in these nests. I often dig up wasps' nests, one on my allotment. Uh, a few years ago and if I see them I uh, wait until you know into well into November and dig those out and just sort of dig out and see how much earth they've removed some of them from underground quite mm. amazing formed a big uh, sort of uh, chamber under the ground well. and built these big nests and then I quite often as I said find these volucella hoverfly larvae all munching away in there mm. so I take those home and rear those see what they hatch into next year. <laughs>